for those people, I, I see a nice audience here today, but I'm trying to help you a little bit about our process, whatever. Today is, uh, we have a facilities meeting, and facility meeting is part of the board structure that helps with certain facets of, of the organization. So, this is not a regular board meeting, as you see only three people sitting here. So what I'd like to do is, okay. in, in this form, instead of just, if you've been to a city council meeting, whatever you got five minutes, what I want to do is, what I'd like you to do is, in this particular form, is have open dialogue, we can share whatever we want. We want some level of order, some level of parliamentary procedure, so everybody can hear whatever, and you know, whatever question you have or whatever dialogue you want to hear from us, we can have some level of a logic, some level of calmness, to understanding what this process is all about. After this meeting is over, we still have an agenda with the facilities committee, uh, and Mr. Carter is the chairperson of that committee. I'm the chairperson of the board, so now you start to understand how the structure is. After this facilities meeting is over, we'll have a regular board meeting, and then if you had comment to that meeting, you can also do that also. But in this meeting here, I wanted you to have uh, a notice of time, notice of at least you don't have uh, just two minutes to speak and whatever you want to be, so we kind of go that way. Um, I, I'd like to, Mr. Chairman of the facility, is, is actually run this through uh, the chair of my office first, and then we'll go to you and your facilities, and we'll kind of share the dialogue that way. Okay, we all, you okay with that? Uh, no problem. Okay. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you for coming here, and I guess always when you have meetings of people who are upset or concern, whatever, there's always a level of information concern, and, uh, and I appreciate you uh, coming to do that. The other thing is I also apologize that maybe, maybe misinform what happened, I think Wade was the general announcement back in September for a general meeting for... Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, let me uh, just uh, reiterate here for the record, the public hearing process that did happen, this is a New York State DOT project. The public hearing was held in this in this boardroom September 8, 2011. Um, it was notified in the it was published in the Ogdensburg uh, Journal and also the Sunday Advance. And public comment was accepted uh, 30 days uh, after that date. Okay. Well, well, obviously in September, I, I know you people are emotionally attached to the project, and the road wasn't being built. You didn't really recognize that something was going to happen. Now all of a sudden you realize. Wait a minute, all these diggers are here and everything's going on, the property, the fence, and rumors, and this, that, whatever. Um, in, in this process, it's, in this project that we're working with it became much more complicated than a lot of you people really realize. Um, the goal and the agenda of the Bridge and Port Authority was to create jobs, to improve the port, to increase the economic potential for this area. So there, we have a lot at stake of building this road and doing the things that we want to do. If you realize later in 2014, transportation out of the port of Augsburg will not go down Patterson Street anymore whatsoever. It will go off this access road and alleviate going down through any other place through town with this type of vehicles and whatever. So, so the city of Augsburg has a huge project in 2014. Patterson Street will be redone and used for just residential traffic whatsoever, nothing from the port of Augsburg. So now that we get to this point of our procedure and process that there's a lot to be accomplished here, okay, in regards to this. My opening comments to you folks is, um, I, I know we're, we're gonna, there's rumors out there about a fence, where the fence is gonna go, uh, what, how high it's gonna be, and, and the road, and where it's gonna go, and all these type of things, whatever. Uh, I'll let Wade uh, introduce some of the things that, what the fence means, and where, we have, where we're at, and maybe some dialogue that you wanna share with them, Wade, so they can understand a little bit more about where we're at. Certainly, um, and I'll pass. I'll pass these uh, diagrams around. I apologize. I don't have enough copies here for everybody getting the crowd today. Okay. Those are those copies are not uh, for distribution, Sam. No, they can't see them. What's that? They can't uh, see. Them? Those are the only copies, right there. No, I'm not going to give them to them. I'm just going to let them so they can look at them. The top one, yes. The bottom two, no. Okay. okay. Can have these Sorry about over. that. I tried. <laughs> Um, just had the wrong file, though. Huh? Just had the wrong file, though. Okay. Um, what, what you, I don't know if you can really see it, whatever, just I apologize for this type of thing, whatever. As you realize, 
No, here's the railroad tracks. Here's the railroad tracks. So the camera time. And we got some red lines, blue lines, and there's another line going across here. Um, the, the, the dynamics, the dynamics of all this is where your property line is is one this thing. Is, this is where, this where the bridge of port is willing agenda. to have some level of easement for agenda. you okay. is what's up for discussion. All right, what the state of New York mandates us and allows us to do. Okay, is, is is really critical or whatever. The first issue of, of the line is number one is to uh, the liability factor of what the road does, okay, and, and what our security and part of the port is allowed to do and not allowed to do. Okay, are, are we all understanding of that part? So nobody's putting right now a point of okay, and we understand any fence on your property line. Unless you want one. <laughs> 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 All right, so there's no, no offense in your property line or whatever. Working with uh, certain political or, uh, or representatives to, to make a common boundary, to make with the best decision that makes us present safety, and also what is my, I'd say the Bridge Port Authority's liability of what we can do and what we can't do. You people are all taxpayers. You all pay taxes, okay? And that's taxpayers' land. Over. So what the ta what the state of New York says we can do with it, where the fence has to go, it'll be critical, whatever. What you folks have done over years is maintain the property. You made it your own, you mowed it, whatever, and it's like, and I don't say we should have told you not to during the weeds, but we didn't tell you not to. And maybe that's a mistake on our part, and maybe we should have told you not to mow it because it's not your property. But we didn't do that, and that's that's, that's a that's a point of contention. Okay, we didn't do that. So you get, you enjoyed it, you used it, you beautified it, you did all the things that you thought was a good thing to do. Agree? Agree? And, and that's that's really a point point of contention where I want to be. So now, so now what is what fence is proposed? The six foot fence, bar on top, nothing more than that, nothing more than that. If you look further down, if you look down your property line, look down the left. You see uh, like an eight foot fence with a bob wire on top, okay, and really tight security. We bargain out of that. We bargain out of that. We don't think that's what we need. That's not what we want. Now, if all of a sudden we start, people are jumping over the railroad tracks, or jumping over the, the fence and doing this, that, whatever. We did have a problem with the 2008 project. And somebody go over and they defaced one of the turbines or blade tread. Yes. Yeah, it, you know, so they defaced one of the blades and what happened was it was a million dollars of liability, okay? Because it, if you bought it and it came back with this on it, it had to go. So we have to have some level of security of what's going to be there. Is it going to be Fort Knox? I don't think so. So we're really stuck in position here. And do we really want to make a tight security and say nobody's going to go down to Wall Street and go down there and use the, you know, the park here or whatever? We haven't made that statement whatsoever. We're trying to be as, as congenial as proper as possible to whatever, whatever it may be. Now some of you folks have property or have built things over your property line. We know that. And probably you do too or you don't really know how far you were, but uh, so we're trying to work through that not to tear down your building or make some of the things happen where it want to be. So I guess what we could do for, for, for our board here or whatever, entertain any questions and thoughts and feelings that you have and so we can address those issues so you go home and say, okay, this is what we got. I will say this though, there'll be no fence before September. So you won't see any fence, okay, until September. And where it's gonna go, okay, will be as where we can do what we can't do, okay? Um, Thoughts, well, just to, yeah, just to recap what yeah. you were saying, that diagram that you have in your hand there, Sam, the yeah. red line is where the fence could go, the blue line is where it's presently proposed to go. Yeah. You want to see um, the, the document that's uh, going around that has the yellow highlighted areas, that's areas where uh, things are over the line onto the Bridge and Port Authority's property, as you can see highlighted in yellow. Yeah. And we'll make some more copies of those so that everybody has one. 
Oh, I'm looking look at it. Oh, okay. uh, by rule, by rule, we have a um, we have a new or excuse me, be a new test case. We have a new uh, video system. You don't probably don't realize that all our meetings are videotaped. So if you want to speak, it's like going to city council, or whatever. By rule, you have to come up to the podium, give your name and address, and go from there. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Wait, anything you want to? Yes. Cameras on. Cameras on. Cameras on. And uh, for the sake of discussion today, could we get your uh, name and address when you speak from the podium, please, just so that way we have it for the record? Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. We're talking. Here. Any thoughts, folks? Any comments? We're not. We're not. Most of us are concerned with the facts. Okay. Come on, come on. Come on. Oh, right. When your people are. Skip, you got to come up here. You got to come up here. Oh, <laughs> Fred Bannon told me not to talk at this because I get kind of heated. No, you won't. You won't fight. <laughs> so, I've been there for almost 30 years. My in law has been down there for, well, my mother in law has been down there for 73. We asked the bridge in port, what year was it, we? That we asked the bridge, we sent a letter to the bridge in port to clean that up down there. Four years ago, something like that. Three, four years ago. To clean it up, right? Never heard back from them. I've got almost ten thousand dollars out of my own pocket cleaning that up. I mean, I'm talking garbage. I'm talking car parts. I'm talking boulders. I'm bringing in fill, hundreds of dollars of seed. You know, we're not disputing that you people own this, all right? But you didn't want nothing to do with it before until this road. And we understand you have to make a living down there, all right? Our main concern is. We know the road's going in there. It's good for the bridge of port, all right? It's good for the economy in Augensburg. But why does it have to encroach that far up? I have grandson, my grandson slides down that hill. I have nieces and nephews that come down. It's not a big hill, but I know where they're at. Now you're gonna put a fence right there at that border where your red proposal is. They're gonna be bouncing off that fence at the bottom of my hill. And my other concern is once that fence is up, you guys aren't going to maintain it because you've never maintained it before. The weeds are going to grow up, the bamboo. I cut bamboo down there, me and Kevin cut bamboo down there for 20 some years by hand. And it just kept coming back up, we had to have it dug up. But I hired a backhoe to come in there. And we're, I mean, we invested $10,000 of our own pocket. I did my mother-in-law's and I did my neighbors in between us, that property down there. We're not contesting the fact that you guys own the property. We didn't build nothing on it, but it's green space. And the last thing Augensburg needs is another fence up blocking people from the river. Because that's all we got left in Augensburg. There's nothing else. But I don't know, I mean, and all these people are concerned about that. We know you guys own the land. That's not the point. But when we get threatened, well, this is where the fence could go, the red lines, you know? I, I, yeah, I understand it. That's not good. I, I know. Well, what, what I can say is this, is if this project makes it, if this project wasn't happening and we didn't really have a, a, a marketing plan and an exiting plan that we worked with the city because the city's been very cooperative with us that we tried to do this type of project and make those type of things happen. If this wasn't happening, we'd probably be status quo, okay? We'd probably be status quo. You'd, you'd be still mowing, you'd still be throwing rocks over or whatever you're doing. We probably wouldn't still, uh, you know, it's been status quo. But now all of a sudden, a light off goes in our head just as much as a light off goes in your head. Sure it's something wrong here. Something we got to need to do. I mean, we 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 place that. I mean, you guys are looking for uh, um, liability and security. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing more reliable than these neighbors right here protecting that property down there. We chase kids yeah. out of there. Me and Jack Carmody caught somebody dumping sheetrock, plaster and lath down there last. About 9:30, 10 o'clock at night, dumping down there that we ran out of there. But I mean, every year we get down yeah. and we clean it up. I mean, I mowed the grass down there yesterday around all that yeah. equipment, picking up rocks. And because if we didn't, you'd have them bamboo shoots ten feet tall down there, just yeah. like it was. And I'm afraid when that fence goes up, it's going to be the same thing. Nobody's going to maintain it. You're going to say, "Well, we got a crew that will, you know, go down there and cut the grass." And I'm saying no because it hasn't happened. Yeah. And not the and not in the 73 years my mother's been there, my mother-in-law's been there. They haven't. I mean, it used to be a city dump. You yes. can't really build anything on it. Yeah. 
Well, we've, we've, we we found out though in this whole project, we started digging parts there, and you probably already know. I mean, it's amazing what's been thrown over the hill. Oh. I mean, we found, a, I don't know, maybe a hundred and some odd tires and whatever guy yeah. wanted to get rid of his wash machine, refrigerator, just uh, let's throw over the hill because... Absolutely. We, we still do. Well, you know, it's like, so we have, a, you know, we actually have an environmental responsibility here now. All of a sudden we dig something up, we start to realize there's a sinkhole for this and something's in the air and it's like, whoa, we got a problem here. We got a problem here. So it's just a matter of a fence line for, for safety of... of um, of transportation, there's a very metal fence also we gotta really think about what's what's going on here. And I didn't even bring up the fact that I mean Kevin and Mo put a lot of money into their business. They got a beautiful view right there. People don't want to look at that fence up down there. And you're saying well it's only gonna be six feet high? Well they'll be down at the bottom of the hill. You know, they'll be down well, below. It's, it's, it's not it's, it's not, not, it's not, not at the bottom of the hill. What, what plans are you looking at, Sam? <laughs> Scott Nichols? Here Kevin, do you want this one? Well, I just want to give this to the board. I don't have my glasses on it, so I can't read it. But we have over 180 signatures, people, customers, everybody here that lives on Ford Street that's concerned with where the fence is going to go. Okay. We don't need another commercial-looking property in this town. It, where this fence is proposed does not have to be there. Every argument I've heard doesn't make sense. <coughs> Why can't the fence just go back along next to the road? You know, just tell me that. Yeah, that's all we're at. Well, yeah. but, but don't I, tell me security. But I thought I was clear of that. I, it was really precisely clear is what what the what I'm allowed to give land up to isn't for me personally. I, I tell you what, if it was my personal decision, okay, because I sit here and I'm liable what I say to you and what I do, what we all do here. If I move that fence down there and all of a sudden the state of New York says, you don't have the authority to do that. You have to protect, you have to protect the state of New York's property. That, that's our that's our responsibility. Now, if I can get an easement and work with something to help you folks, which we're trying to do here, because you people, it's like if I, I live in I live in town. I have a fence on one side of me, fence on the back side of me, and I, I have an easement right next to my property. I mean, nobody's giving me thirty feet, twenty feet, okay, whatever. We're not but asking you. To I know you're not. I know you're not. But I'm just saying this. But what my lot, what our what our choices are. Okay, isn't a personal choice, is what I'm legally responsible to make that choice. That's why I have a lawyer sitting here. He'll, he'll tell me, research, whatever, what we can do and what we can't do. Now, where would I like to put the fence? I'd like to put it down there where you're saying to put it. Absolutely. Very nicely put there. Okay, we've got a road, nothing happened before, nobody was hurt, so you're mowing the lawn instead of whatever, everything's fine. But there's more to it than that. There's more to it than that. Okay, now wait, it's kind of like, let's, okay, let's put a buffer halfway in between if you see the blue line on the fence or whatever. And Kevin, you got property, you've got some real issues, okay? We're trying to work with you for a parking lot to help you and... Uh, we don't want a parking My lot. Well, I'm just saying table. this, whatever, to have an access there, whatever. I'm, I'm on just the saying. location of the blue fence that you see there, uh, the blue fence is located at its closest point, 34 feet. From the nearest property line, line. Good and this farthest point, uh, 79 feet plus or minus from the nearest property line. It's well set back uh, from the existing property lines. The fence location that you see in blue. But where the fence is going, my sister's land's out behind my property, and hers is being pulled right in. There is absolutely no way she can get to that property if she ever wanted to put a camper back there. You can't get between Scott's garage and my mother's house. No, they do that. that. They're driving up on the side of the hill, yes. down the base of my place. Yeah. They're like this. Yeah. And you, and where the fence is going, where Jack Carmody's house is, it's got a great big hump right yeah. there. You cannot drive a yeah. camper over top of that. Well, I can just do that. Could you? Could you? Wait, we got we got to stop here a second, okay? okay. Yeah, I know it's I know it's hard. Whatever, but I, I promised myself I wasn't going to talk. So That's all right. <laughs> you look good on camera, better than me anyway. <laughs> well, I want to. Say your name. I'm Maureen Mank. Thanks, Maureen. Co-owner. Dragged into uh, the Phoenix on the bay. I just want to know what if the, your hands are tied. What do we got to do to untie them to make to make it happen? Well, that's where the lawyer and, and, and the. Um, Maybe you can answer that question better than I can, Lee. But that's where we, what our we have to find out what our legal responsibilities are, what they what we can do, can't do. 
probably probably really what's happened is uh, the years that you've been on there, the Bridge and Port Authority didn't make make a directive and say, listen, you have to stay off that property until the winter wanna be. Nobody ever did that. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever did that. And you know, so uh, were we happy with what you're doing? Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, you maintain the property. Thousand dollars okay. a year to maintain that. But, I know. but, but first of all, that's that's your. I won't say your risk to do that. That's your choice. And really, really, it's, it's a level of trespassing also, because you're going on somebody else's property to mow it, even though it's not yours. So I mean, that's okay. Do we really deal with that? Don't laugh, because that's that's really what's happening. Well, I'm not going that route. But it's not a legal still trespass. Happens. There's no signs. There's nothing up. But you guys are still going to have where you put the fence. You're still going to own the huh? park closest they to the residence. No, I don't. They don't. Question. The Board Authority years ago gave my father, which is worth a pay, access to be able to get to that property out behind there when he bought this property off of Rick Battle. Okay. And for years, he even maintained yeah. it, mowing it, and everything for them. And now yeah. that he's gone and all this is going on, yeah. You know, it, it was a word of mouth at that time. You know, he never had anything in writing. So sure. now the, la the land is, the land out back is my sister's, the land in the front is mine. So if I ever sold the house, she's locked in there. What is she ever yeah. gonna do with that? Well, yeah, there's a lot of properties in Augsburg have the same problem, I, I can tell you well, that. Well, no, because everybody yeah. else has property yeah. behind them. They own the house and they own yeah. the property yeah. behind them. But ours yeah. is the only one that's actually separated. Because yeah. my yeah. sister down in Texas owns yeah. the one out behind yeah. us. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, you say it's a level of risk, and we did it on our own, but I know. Yeah. We, we requested that bridge of port clean it up, and we never got a response. Yeah, never. Yeah. Well, so you yeah. say we took it. I'd like to respond. Show, I'd like to respond to the. Can you just wait a second. Wait, 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 Mrs. Baker has the floor here. Oh no, I just oh, wanted to say oh, oh, I, no, to, no, to their comments okay. back there. I just wanted to say that you know yeah. I work for the city. It is an ordinance that you do have to keep no. the grass cut. Can't be longer than 12 inches. Yeah. Yeah. And. It is. They're maintaining it for you guys. So No, they maintain it for themselves. Right. Right. But the, the you could get the a violation of that. But it's, there's no violation of city ordinances by the OPBA. We're not we're not bound by the city ordinance with regard to There you go, New York State. Well, let me say a couple of things here, okay? Being a senior person here. I've been here since nineteen ninety two. Tisha's not here right now. I've had her pull the records. I wanted to see the letters. I wanted to see the written complaints, the verbal complaints. We don't have any. I'm saying nothing was done since 1992. I have not heard anything about that piece of property down there. And I know that over the years, Jack Carmody and those folks worked hard, yourselves, to fill in behind your homes there. Because I know what it was there. I grew up here. And I think, you know, over the years, uh, maybe some things should have been happening when the property was purchased from Mr. Badman to the Bridge of Port Authority. At that time, we probably should have, Mr. Dupree, whoever was in charge, uh, Scal, uh, Pisani, we should have probably made some changes down there, whatever we should have done. But nothing was done. But I assure you that if Tisha gets here, we looked for the records to see how many complaints was filed and letters was filed. Because I am a person that likes to take care of the community. But I'm also a person that has to stay within line of the state of New York and this authority. These people over here, they've been hollering for I don't know how long to have a fence put up. It was a fence there, fell down from down there. So we made sure we put the fence in the way they wanted it and properly put it in. My main concern was up here by the river where it drops right off. I was worried about the kids running over there because we all played baseball, all of us in this room, even that fellow there. But anyways, the kids could have run there and dropped right off that hill right down to the river. So we started putting the fence along there to get that secured to make sure our kids couldn't run over there when we were playing baseball. These people came, we told them we were gonna clean it up, we did. We put a $15,000 fence up for them and made them happy over there. The fence is on the property line. That's where it had to go. We couldn't put it over on their property, and even they wanted us to do that, we couldn't do that. We put it where it had to go, it was just on the property. <clears throat> this situation down where you folks are, we have already, we've kind of looked at that already, and we've seen the ins and outs and everything and how your properties were going. We said, listen, let's keep the bear away dead, away from them people, let's go down through with the line down through there to see what we can do and keep it straight 
where they don't get affected. So in other words, where we were standing was right behind the restaurant. So we went down through, we were over here with the fence line. Now, pay, uh, Sen Senator Ritchie has asked us to consider putting it as close to the road as we can that's coming out of there. I don't, as I said, I don't have a problem once we find out the legalities and what we have to do with the property. But we can't give the authority property away. Just can't do it. It's not going to happen. The city can't give their property away. All of you in this room remember the Bob Garvey situation. My neighbor up there at the park. The JCs owned this. Fagonia owned this. They all left it. But one thing they left, you can never sell it. You can never sell that property. It has to be used for recreation. Bob Garvey knew that. Bob was told to put his fence on his line, not on the city property. Bob took it upon himself and said, I'm going to put it 10 feet over. I'm going to put the dirt in like you did and seed it and everything else. And Bob did it. And then all of a sudden, in come the recreation park. The city council tried to sell it, wouldn't even sell it to them. They had to move that fence back 10 feet to his house. To this day, it's right where it's where it's supposed to be now. We could, they couldn't do anything about it. So their hands were tied because of that, the way the people had left that, the JCs or whatever. Today, they've never used that property. They mow it. The city goes up with their mower. That's all they do. Why they needed that 10 feet of property is beyond me. We're gonna do what's right for you folks down there. But now that this thing is mushroomed, and other people are saying we're taking things away from you and everything else, it's not true. But if we're gonna have to give you the right of way to that property, we're gonna to have to do it the legal way. It's no different, Niagara Mohawk, gas lines, we'll give you an easement, but we've got to take that responsibility for that portion of property we're talking about off the Bridge and Port Authority. If someone gets hurt on there, and if we just say, well, okay, you can use it, and now we're letting you use the property without the proper stuff in place, it can't, do, can't happen that way. As far as putting the fence as close to the road, as far as I'm concerned, I don't have a problem with that, and I don't think Sam does either. But I think when this road is all done, you people are going to be happy. Oh, got to get the road built. We're most definitely going to be happy. We're not. And we're not shutting this out. I think that road right there is a great, yeah, great thing. Ahead, yeah. Can you see that fence over there? We're all concerned with the fence. Can you see that fence over there? Yeah, but it's not. It's not yeah, ten feet behind my garage. <laughs> no, no, I know that. <laughs> Skip, we're going to try to fix that. Can you see that over there, Skip? Yep. That's what it's going to look like. But it's still not 10 feet behind my garage. It looks good way back there. No, what I say is that's what it's going to look like. And if it was that far away next to the road, that would be great too. I mean, be even better. Now, all of us know in this room, all of us, that things that we had for years and done for years on certain properties, things change. People, some, another owner gets it, and we've been hunting, doing it, fishing it, and hunting it for 30 years. All of a sudden, we can't do it no more. I mean, the tree stands come down, everything else. Where are the properties? It happens. Sure. If you, uh, you're not covered, you don't have to look up to the city rules. You're a state agency, right? That's correct. Okay. I have one. Our authority has let layer all the way from Messina to Augsburg, and then the authority actually the authority sold where those new homes are, right down here in Lisbon. The authority sold that property with the with the with the idea that it would be go to develop the beach, and that's where the money went. Nobody gained from it. But if they can put people's property down there for 50 years. Why does the next 50 years have to, why is this going to be a problem? This is not going to be a problem, I think, when it's all so done. I, uh, if you can walk there with, with their, where they've taken me, I think it's... I was down there one day and I had to leave. Because they were coming after me. We, we didn't run you off that bad, Freddie. Right? <laughs> 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 we didn't run you off, Freddie, we know that. But point I want all of you to know from, from my perspective of this thing is we're going to try to fix it and do what's right. And if there's something we can do with easements and there's something we can do with this particular property for you folks, we're willing to do it. It's, you, you know, it's just like, it's just, uh, what was that? What do you plan to do? Well, we're planning on putting a security fence down through there. 
okay, along the road, in a place where everybody will try to be happy. Now, if it gets down to the nitty gritty, you know, where people say, well, it's the highway or the, you know, Fred's way, it ain't that going to be that way. We're going to put the fence, and we're not going to stick it on your property line. You surely don't want to have a fence coming up in the restaurant. So, we're going to work with you folks. It will lease those lanes. That's what I'm talking about. How are you? It, it, it's, there you go. And that's where we've got to head. Now, we've got those with Niagara Mohawk. But give us a chance to look at what really, we get this thing done and clean out that muck hole and get rid of 200 tires and the refrigerator and everything else. I'm glad the price of metals went up. What did they do with the metal? Did they keep it? Good luck, you're going to be taken to China because it was a dump. Yeah, well, like nobody knew it was a dump. But, and on and on. Uh, when we originally started, we didn't think we could even put the road there because we thought it was a wetland. So we brought in the experts, the DEC and the feds, Corps of Engineers. It was not a wetland. So that's one good thing. Or next, you know the stuff that you're mowing? If it was wetland, we all know it wouldn't be in there. The bamboos would be growing because you wouldn't even be allowed on the property. So anyways, uh, we got over those hurdles, and I think we're going to get over this one. There's a lot of people at, uh, just on rest right now because of the way everything's going. I think when the job is all done, everybody in this room will be <coughs> somewhat happy. And whatever's connected behind each house, as far as I'm concerned as a board member, and I don't speak for the board, I would do probably what Mr. Kelly suggested, because that's what I suggested to Sam the other night, was maybe we'll come up with a lease, pay a buck, Everybody's happy. But we're covered now because you're going to have to have insurance to cover that. Right now, it's, if someone got hurt on the Bridge of Port Authority's property, even though you mowed it and you did everything, and you're down there mowing, a chunk of steel flew out and hit somebody or hit some kid or whatever, they're coming after us. Your homeowner is not going to cover it because it's not your property. And you never registered it with your homeowner. None of us did. I didn't, that's for sure. But what I'm saying is, let's this thing work out now. You've made your complaints and things known. We'll work our best with this. We'll keep the fence as close as we can. What more can we do? How do the other members feel? I don't know. It, it's not on my agenda. This, this, uh, Chuck, this is a facilities meeting. This is a general session. I understand they're still on the board. Oh, no. Well, that's... They can speak as now if they want well, to. Ask them the general speak, session. Speak as a citizen. Okay. I know exactly speak as a citizen. Fred does. We're going to do whatever we can do to make everybody as happy as we possibly can. Hopefully, when we finish, everybody will be happy. But I've never seen any project that everybody was 100% happy with. I, for one, and I probably shouldn't speak for Doug, but I know Doug feels exactly the same way. That's why we're sitting here is to support the Bridge and Port Authority Board on one hand and the citizens of Augensburg is another. We're taxpayers, do we understand what they're saying? So we're going to do everything we can do to make you happy. Yeah, I, no, I, I feel the same way, and I think uh, Freddie hit it on the head that I, you know, uh, I think I'm going to work with you people to make sure that everybody gets satisfied and just, you know, it's not going to happen today. I can tell you that right now. All right, and it's going to take a little time. But I think by September, you'll be happy. What? Or you'll probably be back here beating on us. Well, that's fine and dandy. A lot of them will be happy, but what about my sister where her land's going to be? If she's up? landlocked, there's not much we can do about that. If she's landlocked, you know, I don't, the way you, the so way you're, you're you, don't care? you own the front, no. you own the front, and she owns the back. So you've got to give her an easement through there. Well, I don't have to do nothing. That's not well, in our Well, then she's, then well, she's like anybody else. Reports. Well, no, no, no. If, if you have property that's landlocked, which I have some that's landlocked, and I can't get to it, and my neighbor doesn't let me across his property, it's landlocked. There's well, nothing can be done about it. All right, Bridge and Port's a neighbor. Hmm? Bridge and Port's a neighbor to her, then. Well, I'm just telling you. your sisters. She owns the one right here that goes all the way back. The Jenner property? Right here. I own yes. the, the place in the front, she owns the place in the back. Right here. She left she to go and Jenner. property to get to it. Oh, she was just yeah. Well, she had no access to anything. Yes, she did. Bridge and Port gave my father access well, to that no, property. I'm just saying, she, she would have no access with, with legitimate But Rick access. sold the property to them. 
I don't know anything about what, what they did back in those days. Is there well, if the, fence, if the fence ends up where it may be, you're going to have to ask all those people to go across their property. It's not their property. It's for Newport. Well, well, let, 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 let me give you one other example, Mr. Chairman. Let me give you one other example. All of you drove by it to come here today. The house was up there. They were just putting the new cellar under it or something. That was uh, Roland McKee's home. Mm -hmm. Well, prior to Roland really getting involved too much there with it, they wanted a pool. They put the pool on our property. We didn't know it. The pool was all in and everything else. And uh, Roland comes to the meeting here one day and he said he wanted to buy that property. We couldn't figure out why he wanted to buy it. Well, it was because Dan had the land surveyed for the road that was going to go all the way down along the tracks. And at that time, we found out that the pool was on our property. So that was uh, in front of the board for about four years. Well, four years. And uh, there was some real, real down out the bad discussions. They even talked about taking the pool out. Finally, the resolution got passed. We sold them the property. We put the fence up, he put the fence up where the property line was, we sold him the property, he kept his pool, everybody was happy. There was nothing more we could do about it. We couldn't give him that property. The legal department in Albany says you cannot give him the property. You gotta sell it to him for what the value is. So we had to have it appraised. We had it appraised and roll and paid it. There was no I don't remember the exact price, but he paid for the property. That's what had to happen. But on your situation, where your sister owns the back lot to the lot that where your father's home was, and your father gave her the back lot, that's what I'm hearing, right? Yep, and I bought the house. And you bought the house, so the only thing I could say is, you know, sister to sister, you got to give her a, an easement to get into her property. There is no way to get back there. It's, it, it's landlocked. I'm sorry. It's landlocked. So, there's no so that's that's okay. You're you're going to make everybody yeah. else happy, but one person that you don't. No, care I'm not trying. I'm, so, I'm saying we're going to do what's right, and I said when it's all said and done, I think everybody will be happy. And Sam said there might be a few that's not happy, and you're going to be one of them. Oh, really? And probably because we can't give you that property. These people don't want to give up what they got in back of their houses. I don't think. But you're giving them rights to use no, that. No. We're going to give them rights to, to an easement. Okay. If possible, all, everybody will get an easement for a dollar to use that property. And they're right. going to have to carry insurance by telling their homeowners or whatever insurance they got that they own that property under an easement. If somebody gets hurt on it, they're going to be covered. So it doesn't matter that she can't get to her property. She won't have that chance to have that easement. Well, she's got, no, the fence is going right up to if it. If she's it got property right behind her fence. house, if she, She's say, for instance, this is her house, and she owns here and here and here, and the Bridge and Port Authority got this part down here, okay? She, she can take that as an easement. But as far as going all the way up through there, that's a different story. I, I mean, personally, I don't have a problem. If I'm going to lease that land for a dollar a year, I don't have a problem with any of the neighbors driving up there like they normally did.